Watch the Atheist Experience live Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash ytaxp and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call axp. It's time to get sexy on Secular Sexuality. Hello, and welcome to Secular Sexuality, the ACA show ready to get frisky and bone. My name is Christy Powell. I'm joined tonight by a wild animal from the FetLife region of the net. Welcome, Chris the girl. Hello. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, so glad to have you. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, anybody who is watching this live, tonight's poll asks, have you ever felt lost in a role play? You can weigh in live or catch the results near the end of the episode. And in the meantime, we're grabbing our collars and our leashes for a couple of scritches. So give us a call with your stories and questions. We're at 512-991-9242 or tiny.cc slash call sex because the show is coming right now. All right. Well, Chris, so far, I think everything that anybody on watching this show knows about you is that we're here to talk about pet play and that there are cats in the background. So I think already <laughs> everything is on brand. People are on board and ready to like you. Uh, but we want to find out a little bit more about you. So tell us what's got you turned on this week. Um, well, other than the usual, very involved in my uh, local community of kinksters and BDSM, uh, I have been very excited about uh, the Vox Machina, Legend of Vox Machina TV show. I've been keeping track of that. Uh, very, very uh, open sexualities and genders uh, that, that Matt Mercer brings into those. And on the other side, I'm also reading uh, Invisible Women that was recommended by Forrest Valkai and have been really digging into that on my science research section of my brain. So. Nice. Yes. You, you got to play both angles, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sure. Well, I, I don't always get the opportunity to do this. Uh, when we have more guests, it can be a little crowded. But since it's just you and I tonight, I want to take a moment to tell people about a book that I've been rereading with my partner recently uh, called Better Sex Through Mindfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, sub colon, How Women Can Cultivate Desire. I'll totally acknowledge that this is a book aimed specifically at vagina having women. But I think there's so much value for anybody who has sex with women or who has sex in general. Uh, Lori Brado really has written, I think, the, the best book on sex and mindfulness, which are two things that really work well together. And I think that nothing we else we can talk about on the show tonight could be as impactful on somebody's life as checking out that book. So can't recommend it strongly enough. I've actually heard of it, and it has come highly recommended on my end as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I hope people will go and take a look. Uh, but for now, I really am. I don't want to undersell it how excited I am to talk about this topic with you. I uh, tracked you down online months <laughs> and months ago. I think it was actually almost more than a year ago when we first maybe reached out, and we we're finally getting to do this. So thanks so much for being here. Ah, super excited. I, I love talking about this stuff. I love talking to people. I like sniffing all the butts. Uh, yeah. what can I say? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we are wanting to talk about pet space or yeah. uh, what I'm going to perhaps incorrectly, perhaps over reductively define as, as that idea of like allowing yourself to really inhabit the role and the mindset of a character of an animal in like a sexual or even non-sexual role play. Uh, before we start down that road, let's set the table a little bit. Can you describe what we're talking about when we talk about pet play? Well, what we're talking about is humans. We are not talking about animals at all. No animals sure. are ever involved in this. Yeah, hey, uh, no, you got to give that disclaimer, but hello, YouTube. We see you. No one is talking about sex with animals. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, but we're talking about humans taking on animal-like qualities for their own enjoyment. Mm -hmm. um, 
whether that's for engaging in a scene, whether that's in interacting with others, whether that's for sex, no matter what the case is, is if you're just taking on any form of animal-like quality, that is the broad category of pet play. There are Venn diagrams that include pet play that may fall into other categories. We can get into the whole, I have a large poster with all sorts of Venn diagrams with furries and primals and <laughs> what have you, uh, but generalized. Um, so however that may be, however many characteristics of an animal you may take on, that's up to the individual. Sure. So, I mean, is there a meaningful distinction between uh, role playing as cheerleader or sexy nurse or secretary or any of these other, you know, Yandy Halloween store type fantasies? Is there a meaningful distinction between that and role playing as a as a wild dog or as a, a cute little kitten? Um, when you come down to the brass tacks, no. Uh, sure. But I, I would say that if you if you were to compare me to the person who dresses up like a Dalmatian for ha Halloween, I would say we're very, very different creatures uh, mm. in many ways. Uh, they're Dalmatian. I'm a husky. That's a very different distinction there. <laughs> uh, but they uh, we tend to get into it more for the uh, escapism, mm -hmm. whereas is, there is a lot more for uh, playing and playfulness that happens with more of the bedroom casualness of of just putting on a sexy kitten costume there's nothing wrong with that that's fantastic i love it it's like the difference between when we were talking age play the difference between the sexy cath look and the person who's engaged in regular little play mm -hmm. uh, it's the same kind of differentiation yes they're both age play but they have very different connotations for the individuals when it comes down to it sure yeah so i i think that sort of at first blush probably a few different images or ideas jump into people's minds uh something like a, a leather cat suit and a whip or like a cheetah print sexy lingerie I mean, sexy outfits aside how does actual pet play differ from some of the assumptions people might make? Uh, I will say that some of the sexiest people I've ever seen have been in pet play. They have been in leather cat suits. Sure. Yeah. Valid. They were not holding a whip. <laughs> <laughs> they were the most cat like creature I've ever met was a person. Um, mm. She like personified, pun intended, everything to do with cat. And she was in the sexy suit. But most of us who are involved in pet play, it's going to be more for the mentality the attributes we take on not for necessarily the sex appeal for the other person mm -hmm. it's more how those people perceive us the most more we can get into that pet uh personality that we get into so if i'm wearing something that makes me feel like a dog or feel like a bird that's something i'm going to definitely more aim towards even if it doesn't necessarily look as appealing to the outside world Sure, sure. So it's less uh, maybe performative in that sense, more uh, more escapist. I mean, I, I know yeah. that we're painting with really, really broad <laughs> brushes about very personal and very intimate, generally, experiences. For example, like a puphood uh, not only helps like desensitize, depersonize the person for the self, it limits visibility, it it, uh, it takes away some of the sensations so that you're feeling less like a person. But and I'm sorry, when you say pup hood, you're referring oh. to like a leather hood that somebody who identifies as a pup might wear in a scene, yeah? Yes, I, I sometimes forget. I have to make sure I'm talking the lingo for everybody. It's yes, the internet. We got all types, all comers. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes they're made out of leather, latex, uh, poly... Uh, blends and whatnot and they are shaped and look like a dog but usually kind of cartoony or simplified puppy-like uh, attributes but it both helps the person on the inside and the person on the outside more kind of visualize this is a dog as opposed to just coming face to face with a little bit of face paint mm -hmm. it builds that illusion yeah yeah so it's about the the illusion that you maybe give off to your owner or handler your your scene partner but to a much greater extent, like what helps you to feel pup-ish or kitten-ish or to, to get into that headset? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a rabbit hole I can get into <laughs> at length about. <laughs> Well, just to just since we're here, before we move on, a few weeks ago, we spoke to Daddy Danger about gender and about bear culture and the ideas of bears and otters and wolves. Oh, my. Like, how is that different from what we're describing here? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, it's more the uh, we talk about people who have 
pet-like qualities? Well, these are more people whose human behaviors have animal-like connotations. Mm, so mm -hmm. you have like a bear we visualize as strong and protective, but also very cuddly, but also at the same time just kind of big and burly. And that's what you think of when you think of large gay man is big and burly and furry and that sort of thing. It's not saying that he is a bear, but they those positive qualities of a bear meet his human bear like bear, bear likeness. Like. Yeah. And the same thing for the otters and the wolves and that whole pack mentality. And and I love them. I love them. <laughs> They're all so great. I love you. <laughs> Uh, what are some of the common or, or maybe even like necessary elements of pet play? Uh, we're, we're talking a little bit about clothes. Is that a mandatory piece of it? Is there anything mandatory? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm going to tell you, is there are so many pet shows, puppy moshes. These are like a big events where lots of different, either a lot of puppies or a lot of different pets get together and have a good time together. And they're absolutely fantastic. You can have agility courses and whatnot. But when it comes down to it, most of us shed that crap by the end of the night. It is absolutely <laughs> not necessary whatsoever because once you get rolling and playing, most of us are sweating. I do not know how my pup players that do the full uh, leather suits, I don't know how they survive. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, most of that tends to fall away once we kind of really get into the bread and butter of, of pet play. It's not necessary. Some people find it very helpful for getting into mentality, but it is not required mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Are, are there elements outside of costuming that are that are common or that most people find useful at least some of the time? Yeah, I, I know a lot of people, if they're trying to get into very specific mentality, having some sort of leash, mm -hmm. a collar, those that form of ownership and restriction can be very helpful. Uh, I know that some people find that uh, anything that, that restricts movement of fingers and hands, because by, by golly evolution, this is what got us ahead of a lot of other animals. Mm, I can feel uh, much more like <laughs> a, a a cat, for instance, if I have little kitten mittens rather exactly. than, you know, my prehensile, all of it. Yeah. You're, if you were remove the tools of verbal and uh, appendages mm. from your ability, from your tool set, you suddenly are only able to express and manipulate the world as an animal does and that can be incredibly helpful so having mitts having a gag or something like that has gone a long way to help a lot of people with their pet play and uh, some people might find it necessarily especially early on as a crutch when they're still trying to kind of get comfortable with the idea yeah and well and like you said a lot of that may get shed as uh things heat up oh yeah uh, what what does that look like i mean you you talked about the bread and butter of pet play what is maybe a typical example of how a couple of different types of scenes might go down. Uh, I they, they range depending on the type of pet you're working with. Uh, for example, if you're working with like a working animal, like a pony, or you've got your uh, like guard dogs, there may be a really restrictive thing of they have a certain task and they may be in a, a more public environment, like in a dungeon space. And they may go through the steps of protecting their owner or going through an agility course or going through that. Whereas sometimes you have your lazy lap dogs where it may be very, very laid back for the handler, or the caregiver, or the owner, uh, that, that side of the relationship where that pup is just taking a nap on the floor <laughs> and chewing on some toys and getting into trouble. And there can be even a bratty little element of the dog trying to find garbage to get into and top over or something just to get some more attention. Uh, it's really comes down to what the instinct of the individual feels like getting into, what kind of, much like with the negotiation, what do you expect to get out of it? But for my, most of the things I do, it's, it's uh, it may be a playful game of tag. It may be wrestling with other animals but uh uh yeah it's it, it, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of hands off which caretakers and handlers can have a lot of joy of just watching the scene unfold mm -hmm. Whereas, or they can be much more involved and if they want to be much more involved they may be more akin to wanting to get involved into pony play or dog shows or that sort of thing i don't know many people who are into cat play who want to be very involved in training so <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're not necessarily categorizing people in the same way we are with the otters and the bears and the wolves and all of this, 
but when people select a specific animal and then I guess form a relationship with, you said, handler, possibly master. I mean, can you talk about, I guess, that uh, dom-sub dynamic and the different bratty and non-bratty relationships that go in all that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, as a handler, you're going to be, if you are interested in being involved in pet play, you're going to want to have a pet that meets your personality, much like trying to find your actual animal of choice. I'm I don't want a dog that I'm, I'm going to want to go run trails with if I'm a person who likes to sit around and play video games all day. Mm. Same thing with fi trying to find a submissive or a bottom that wants to be involved in pet play. And I, I'm making the option the, the assumption that that's the way it is. It is not always that way. I'm going to tell you there is plenty of tops that are pet players out there too. Have met sure. numbers of them. But uh, you want to be with match with a partner or partners who are going to met, match your level of intensity. So, again, you're what are you looking for in that mentality? How much investment do you want to be involved into it? Do you want to still be able to have a conversation with your bottom when they're in pet space? Some of them, mm. some people like to have the the neko, the the cat girl mentality of they have cat like qualities while still being able to be a person mm -hmm. and they like to be able to purr but also sit around and play games to play video games together that sure. may be the only level of involvement they want to get into with that type of pet play it can and, still be really immersive but oh, in yeah. this place we're you know i guess role playing as some sort of like cat person hybrid i i know how silly all of this sounds in isolation but silly doesn't mean frivolous. It doesn't mean insignificant. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. I, you, if you ever meet one guard dog out there, you know this is <laughs> not frivolous. Uh, and, and you know, I, I know that you've talked to uh, uh, the uh, you were talking about talking to the to daddy about about the bear culture. Mm. There is a very strong leather pup culture out there. And they are very serious. Yes, they're silly as fuck. Excuse my French. But <laughs> yeah, no, my please. God, they are some of the goofiest little pups out there. But they're also very, very serious about their hierarchy. They're very serious about what, what they do, how they wear, how they reflect on their households. And, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm envious of that kind of structure that they have. It is mm -hmm. fantastic. It is not for me. But it is. <laughs> I, I, I love my leather lifestyle. But leather pup is like a whole other level y'all it's mm -hmm. quite wonderful um but yeah it, 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 if you especially and pony play too pony play is very intense very demanding on the body and on the odors to to be able to perform the way they do um and sometimes it's not even intentional seriousness uh i i've done some sled dogging i i as a husky i do like to get in front of a sled and, and go now my sled is as a converted wheelchair mm. but uh i will work until i went to black out if if someone wasn't around to stop that's how intense we get into it uh, yeah the the idea is that you are so committed to that mindset and then i suppose also trusting enough of your handler your scene oh, yeah. partner that they're going to be uh that they're going to be able to take care of you that they're going to be able to sort of oversee some of the the support that you might need in that space yeah I, I I would I have I have uh scared handlers before with the amount of water I chugged down <laughs> after a good play scene. Sure. <laughs> I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. It's never cold here. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how the furries around here do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair to say. Uh kink your pick your kink and your weather. Uh so I, I recognize that there is no exhaustive list. I mean, we are describing this as a uh, personal fantasy and everybody's fantasy and situation is going to be different. But what are some of those broad categories? I mean, are, are huskies like this and ponies are like that? I mean, is there anything that we should be looking at? Um, I, I, I hate categorizing things. Sure. I'm with you on that. Uh, but yeah, you, you typically will have your your pet players and then that's separate from the pony players which is separate from the leather pups um and they tend to overlap a lot for for example i i attend frolicon almost every year it's a big convention in atlanta and we have a whole track of pet play events and one of those is a petting zoo and if you want to see the cl clashing of all the different types of critters all at once you go to that pet to, to the petting zoo 
and we will have the leather pups in one corner tussling with each other sticking their nose up kilts you'll have the pony players over there taking sugar cubes from some littles <laughs> and then you'll have the pet players who are is a squirrel a cow i've seen a velociraptor uh and uh and a sundering of dogs and they're all just chewing on things and chasing after things and they can coexist very very well uh and, but again they, when we were talking about handlers earlier we were talking about what is the intent of your pet play and that's where the biggest kind of categorization is are you looking for mm -hmm. your more casual frivolous silliness that is just having a pet and domestic a household animal are you looking for a job a dog with a job or a pony with a job or are you looking for something that's more of a, uh, a hierarchy of a pack mentality like you would with the leather pups mm -hmm. so and of course there's all sorts of niche genres beyond that of course yeah well in dragons and unicorns and and every other conceivable fantasy oh. that people are fantasizing about oh god the cows Cows have their whole thing about being milked. It is a thing. And I, I love that they have a thing. God bless them, yeah. <laughs> there was a proud cow at Pride this year, and I loved her. She was just, <laughs> just having a great time. Yeah, so I, I guess uh, that is a question worth exploring. I recognize that there is uh, a meaningful distinction between kink and gender and orientation and, and all of these different kinds of things. But do you imagine pet players as being just automatically by virtue of their kink, part of the queer community, however we define that? Uh, automatically? Absolutely not. You, know, sure. you, choose, you choose what a chair is. Uh, but most of the time, yeah. I mean, we're, we're not doing something that is... Um, we're doing something that's kind of taboo, something that's not mm. considered normal. Once you get past a certain age, you stop pretending to be a kitten. I mean, sure. It's really great when my four-year-old niece does it because, you know, make-believe. But once you're an adult, getting down all fours and meowing is considered, uh, if you, that's that's something you punish somebody with. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, that's a humiliation. Depending on what form of the word queer we really want to yeah. use, it's been applied to mean such things as this plenty of times. And so, yeah, it, it tends to be if you if you think alternatively, you end up in the alternative lifestyle, mm. and thus you end over on the the BDSM, the kinky, the queer side of of the universe. And we just kind of, yeah, that's a good place to be. For me, I, kink came before my pet, so uh, mm. I, I that was an easy place for me to be able to explore it. There wasn't anybody else showing me how to do it. Uh, I just kind of like, I, I've heard of things. I've seen a few things on the internet. I'd like to try that. I was fortunate to be with a community that was like, okay, tell, show us what you want to do. And I was like, gave, I gave it a try. And next thing I know, if you build it, they will come. More pets <laughs> started coming out of the word work. And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's see what works. Yeah. Well, so when we get down to it on a, like a personal, on an intimate level, the outfits, the activities, the the tail shaped bug plugs, the knee pads, the laser pointers, balls of strings. I mean, all of these things are here to help to create a a particular mindset, a, a particular headspace. Yes, definitely creating that illusion of being an animal. Uh, the knee pads. I, I always tell people, you are not an a. Uh, bio dog we well, that's how we differentiate between the pet play dog and the and the oh bio, bio dog. dog okay you are not a bio dog. dog you are a pet play dog you are a pet play dog uh because you're not going to say you're not a dog because that's kind of not true sure yeah there's, there's some aspect of it. and and so there are some people who are more have more essence of the animal or animals that they attribute to themselves than others and we don't want to dismiss or disregard that um but uh but you and as you were born as a human and there's certain things your bodies can and can't do and one of those <laughs> is spend excessive amount of times on your knees mm -hmm. and therefore we want to be able to spend as much time as comfortable in that headspace and so knee pads are necessary so there are certain things that are necessary if you want to have extended play mm -hmm. um and uh so much like food please I, I here's my, my my big warning to the audience as cool as it might you might think it might be to have actual dog food 
do not subsist off that stuff and please don't eat it if you're not absolutely sure that that's going to be okay and safe for you to consume. Uh, it does not need our nutrition. There's stuff in that that could tear up your system. We are not biological dolls, but I'm going to tell you, yeah. we got really creative. I've got a whole list of, of recipes that can mimic pet food that's actually just human safe cons for consumption. A lot of it's like, hey, just get a can of chili, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's barely human edible anyways. <laughs> Yeah, but, but all yeah. of these things, I mean, being on all fours and licking milk out of a saucer, yeah. all to get into that headspace. I mean, yeah, I feel like we've been circling around it for a half hour. What, how do you describe that headspace? What does that really feel like Ooh. for you? Uh, it's, uh, it's a letting go. We talked about mm. escapism earlier. Uh, it is engaging in a place in your mind where you can follow more instincts. Uh, a lot of primal players will talk about that following that just fight, flight, or fu fuck mentality, right? So you have that in intense of it. But it also allows you to put everything that is the stressors that are human mm. and put them behind you. Because you can't. You, you can't take care of taxes. You can't worry about whether or not your room's clean when you're a puppy because those are outside of your scope of ability to do. Mm, and mm -hmm. so some, for some people, it's an intensive escapism. Sometimes it's just the, I'd like to not think for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. So like when we talk about caregiver little relationships and oh my God, how great would it feel to love somebody who takes care of you and who, you know, allows you to not feel responsible for all of the adulting you have to do in your lives. This is a just a step removed from that. Oh yeah, definitely. And you're going to find a lot of overlap between your littles and your pet players. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's even the uh, baby furs and so on and so forth. That whole, I need to have someone take care of me, or I need to have some sort of guidance by an outside source uh, to the point that I am going to disassociate with my adult self. There's a lot of that. Um, yeah. So yeah. dissociation, like getting into the role, allowing yourself to almost uh, feel memorized or mesmerized or get into that sort of like hypnotic flow kind of state. That's what we're maybe targeting for, or at least what many people are searching for. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to be fascinated by small textures or uh, being able to be very, very happy at chewing on something just <laughs> totally at 100 percent into it it's a mindfulness activity that doesn't require you to have to focus mm -hmm. yeah well so i know that we are talking about like playing pretend here and by all means like come at me comment bros but as we've already said playing pretend being silly recreation doesn't mean frivolous i i guess i still have to ask though like why not just fuck? Like, why not just jerk off to the front page of Pornhub? I mean, why is it important for people to create these like really elaborate relationship dynamics and mind states in these things? Uh, because it's not about the sex usually. Mm. Uh, while some people, God damn, they have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and just blanket uh, statement. Some uh, people they have, they have sex. sex. God damn it, <laughs> they have sex. Yeah, and it's 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 wonderful when two two dogs decide to go at it. We're just like, wow, you 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 kids have fun. But a lot of it is more about that. That's just a natural instinct of the pet place. This is about tickling a different part of the brain. Mm -hmm. There, uh, there are parts of the brain that get excited and fire and have all sorts of happy chemicals in your brain that have nothing to do with the genitals whatsoever. And that is this edge of escape and relief and releasing of those happy brain chemicals that pet players get. Now, some of us, I also go get a rocks off during the course of that. It may sure. be, uh, you know, you're, you're bitch in heat. Yeah, Go it's adults it. playing yeah. in a very like intimate and you know generally not necessarily private, but in a, like a very vulnerable way. Yeah, it's gonna make sense as sex is gonna come. And, and uh, you know, there was a, all all things off the side. I was in a pup pup play mosh pit. There was a Doverman that came over and he wanted to it, it 
get into some intimacy and I was not having it because, well, I uh, didn't know this Doverman, you know. Yeah. Afterwards, I was like, I saw him take off his mask and I was like, God damn it, why did I say no to that? <laughs> <laughs> but Sunshine, my which is my pet play name, mm. was not into it. <laughs> Chris might have been, but Sunshine did not want to have anything because she felt vulnerable. This was not a safe place for her. So, yeah. Yeah. So how how do you relate to this part of yourself? I, maybe I shouldn't speak for you, but I, I guess I want to clarify that like we're not talking about some sort of like dissociative disorder any more than somebody who is uh, you know performing in a play kind of gets like lost in that state. But this isn't somebody else's script. This isn't somebody else's writing. This is like a meaningful aspect of you yourself. Uh, can you talk more on that? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's like giving part of your id and your and your super ego a, a name, mm, uh, right? So and and putting fuzzy ears on it. Uh, you're <laughs> indulging some base part of yourself that can just play or follow rules or or uh, get lost in, in sex or something, and giving it a a persona personification of of an animal, and. Mine happens to be a a very lazy husky that uh, likes to chew on things on occasion and uh, pulls a cart on occasion. <laughs> and I, it is not a sexual part of me. It is a very just joyful part of me that definitely kind of uh, gets me back. Now, even in my deepest sets, if there was a fire in the room, I would get up on two legs and leave. leave. Sure, yeah. And I'm, I'm able to to disassociate and then reassociate pretty quickly if there was an emergency. Yeah, but if we if we if we were like talking about it in that mesmerized hypnotic yeah. flow state kind of terms, all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Nobody yeah. is able to like force you into that space, and you come and go as you please. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to totally and utterly cuss out whoever whoever disrupted my happy place. But yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't like coming out of my happy place sometimes. I will cry my eyes out when I have to start using my face parts to make words again. <laughs> you know, but uh, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a place you go in your brain to to take joy in simple pleasures. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so what do you personally do to flip that little switch in your mind or to to activate husky mode or, or whatever <laughs> it might mean? <clears throat> well. I, I can do it myself. I prefer to have a handler. I but I have gone into pop moshes by myself before, uh, and typically though it is a a some sort of of I'm not going to be talking. This is kind of like it's time to stop talking mm. and it's time to stop using your thumbs. So if I can get mitts, those are the two big things. Let me take away the two big things that define me as a human. Uh, that's your that's your method acting yeah, strategy me, at least to start. Yeah, that's let me take away that evolutionary stage of, of my development. <laughs> um, and and uh, and usually it's it, yeah, I like I like having the accoutrements, the furry ears, the collar, the whole that it's it's getting dressed is kind of that putting on the persona of, of sunshine. Mm, and that mm -hmm. helps. Now, it might be shed a few moments later when I get too hot, but it definitely helps to put the stuff on. Um, at least going through that ritual a little bit, or even just giving yourself an opportunity to focus on nothing but what it is you're here to do. Yeah, and and it's it, hearing someone call me sunshine is definitely one of those that helps me get into that mindset as well. Being having that different name altogether, um, not because of any magic of itself, but because of I suppose yeah. the association. Like you've been in that mindset, you've heard that word, and it's just been reinforced and reinforced very pavlovian situation uh, mm. of of these things mean pup time and you do it enough and you'll you, 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 you you've you'll got some dogs it. with watering mouths yeah yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> well we definitely want to hear everybody's questions about this topic it's one of those things that i think is uh more straightforward and more like accessible than a lot of people realize but also, as we are describing, like, you know, puppy mosh pits and, you know, the uh, group organization of sex and these things, I know it can scare people off. So if you are curious, if you are concerned, 
please give us a call. We're at 512-991-9242. We're going to jump back into the conversation here in just a moment. But first, let's take a quick look and see what's been going on around the rest of the ACA. Lubrication. Yeah. We preach this a lot here. It's great. Use it. <laughs> Lube <laughs> is your friend. <laughs> How can I reason when an atheist believes they share a grandpa with a chimpanzee? I, I don't believe that. I, I, Nobody I believes I that. The Pope's saying that homosexuality is not a crime. And I suppose we can call this a step in the right direction i don't know if i should actually start singing step in the right direction you threw me off by jumping into wild solipsism because that, that's not somewhere i was going to go into <laughs> uh, i'm constantly I... <laughs> unconvinced about your existence richard i don't know why i'm sorry uh, jo johnny when you commit sin don't you feel kind of bad and kind of i don't think i've ever committed a sin in my many years walking this earth. How, have you ever looked at a woman with lust Oh, yeah. Okay, well, before we start talking about where to shop and what to read and what to buy and, and all of these other resources and, and bigger ideas, I'd really like to find an easy, readily accessible way for people to kind of personally understand or, or connect with what it is that we're talking about. Uh, can you walk us through a couple of very accessible scenarios? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that YouTube is your friend. Sure. And I'm not okay. saying look up, uh, you know, puppy players and stuff. I'm saying go look at animals. Mm. Go watch an animal that you might really enjoy. So, for example, like a husky, I see how they bounce. I see what make the, the way they are woo. Uh, I see that what they like to get into the trouble and the moment something clicks in your head of that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> do that. Mm, uh, that's mm -hmm. the, our, our, our animals are our best teachers. So when you see the way a, a pony trots, you're like, God, they look like they're just enjoying life. Try to think about how you want to make that happen. And, or you'd like to help someone make that happen. And then set up a scene ac accordingly. So whether that's, hey, let's go find a place in our privately in our backyard and let's just do high stepping running through the backyard. Just take the joy of running through grass. And that is something a horse does. And start there of just taking your shoes off and running through some grass. And that is a great place to start with trying to associate with your animal. Mm -hmm. Whether that's let's get down on all fours and just take a nap on the floor. Just take a nap at the floor at the foot of the couch. You can start something very, very simply as that. Uh, and then go back and watch some more. Watch it. Your my 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 own bio dogs have been my best teachers. They're <laughs> like, I watch them and I'm like, why did I think of that? Now I have to hide <laughs> my toys from them. I have my bike and they have theirs. They would know that the toys shall be. But um, I also look at how other people want, react to me. So as, as you're playing, if you see how people are responding, like I love the fact that people want to give me scritches and that brings me joy, do more of that. And, mm. and then say, hey, I would like to do more of that. And, and I want to be in a situation where I've got like six people around and I can go and lay my head on their lap and they give me scratches. That can be a good way to get started. And it doesn't have to be deep. It, you don't even have to be in a pet space. Um, this could be more of a, a, a I'm a person, but I have pet like qualities. That was kind of how I started. I went to Walmart and I found this cute hat with fuzzy ears. I should have brought it out. And it was just one of those, like, had a little bits and a little ears on it. And I and it was just generic as all get out. I wore this thing and, like, had a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of voice intonation of a pet. And people would then say, oh, what a cute little panda. Or, oh, you're a sweet cat. It was my Rorschach hat. Mm, mm -hmm. It allowed me to see how other people wanted me to be. 
And so I would go around and they were like, I would be like starting to act and they'd be like, oh, you're a white weasel. So cute. I love those. I'm like, okay, this person needs me to be a white weasel today. <laughs> and so before I'd really gotten in and discovered who Sunshine was, this was my great way of learning about other people and also then being able to explore different roles and figure out what worked for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to a scene, if I've never really gotten to play very much, it may be an exploratory of let's just get down on all fours, play with a bowl, play with a leash uh do you want to chew on something just have some options there and they don't even have to be pet stuff even you can use the bowls out of your kitchen and a clean pair of socks go for it something that that just makes you feel like you are enacting that lifestyle yeah. or, or doing those sorts of things yeah i mean i'm imagining like the uh rather vanilla cishet couple that is listening to this podcast as they're driving and one of them is thinking about like squeezing the other's knee and saying, you know, I'd really like to maybe see what the hell they're talking about and try an afternoon or to try a uh, just a brief experience of being a puppy with you or a kitten with you. Uh, can you lay out some scenarios, uh, some sort of role or some sort of scene for people to really dive into all that? Yeah. I, I, I never underestimate the power of sitting at someone's knee. Mm. That's going to make you feel smaller. It's going to, it, it dehumanizes you a little bit. And that's kind of what we're going for. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Yeah. And just sit and watch your favorite show. Don't mm. talk about it. Don't talk about it at all. Just sit there and get petted and watch your show at that person's knee. And then if you, and then See what you can do about non-verbally asking for things. Mm, mm -hmm. So Try communicating to... within the the framework yeah. of that pet, of that mind space. That is like the best way to start. Uh, it is a simple, you don't even have to have an animal at that point. Specifically, you could be a cat, a dog, uh, a serval, a, a lion. At that point, you could be anything. But you are in a place where the one person is in control and one person's not. And that person cannot speak. And if you can take away those two things, you're going to be on your kind of starting to, and your, your, your handler will start to visualize what kind of animal you are. You will start to visualize what kind of animal you are and what traits feel natural and what feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, without getting like too invested, are there are there props, costumes, uh, toys, tools? I mean, I know we've been talking about a handful of things. Where where would somebody start? Uh, Pet Smart. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you just kind of look down the aisle and wait for there to be no one there. And then you try on the collar. Um, <laughs> the only problem is, is that again, we're not, we're not bio dogs. Uh, mm. When you're buying a pet collar, you are going to want to try it. If you don't feel comfortable running it around your neck, try the inside of your elbow uh, collars, make sure that you're not going to end up with that scratchy stuff that all stuff can also be filed down. And uh, you can tell I've worked with a lot of crafts people over the years of, you, know, you can always <laughs> think, but you can get some, there's a thousand places you can buy a collar made for humans on the internet at this point. Mm -hmm. um, Etsy is very much your friend here. If, one, at least once you're ready to start investing a little bit. Uh, on the, uh, on the Fet Lives where you found me, uh, you know, just doing my thing uh, in the uh, the pet palace. I, I like the uh, idea that the audience thinks that I just like sort yeah. of troll fet life, but <laughs> not for the reason most people do. Just trying to find somebody to come and talk to me about something sexy and funny and weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was fantastic, but uh, I have we we constantly have a bokus of of great websites uh, i try not to give my, too much money to etsy for my own reasons sure but i have a ton of etsy websites i have a ton of like kittens cream and uh god forget the the leather leather puppy what i blanket on the name right now um but i also have a bunch of websites up there of places you can go to learn more about pet play mm -hmm. uh, so we try to keep a library going of good websites to find equipment uh, but if you're going to do anything on all fours, go find you a really good pair of knee pads. <laughs> uh, whether that's, uh, I prefer the volleyball ones because they're soft and you can easily put grips on them for indoor play. But if you're going to mm. do outdoor play, you may want to go with the gardener or the uh, construction knee pads. That is honestly like some insider information <laughs> that I don't think you get from the Cosmo 
com, you know, <laughs> pet play 101 page. Um, and the other thing is, is that if you are going to be doing nonverbal play, uh, invest in what you want to be your nonverbal safe word. Mm. Uh, if you, something's going really badly, you're going to want to have something that's going to get you out of that headspace. For example, I tell this great story call and I entitle it. There is no bark for Rolades. Uh, and we have put together a big pet play event at our dungeon. I showed up. We were, we didn't have time to eat. We got everything set up for all these things. And my, uh, leather sister had made spicy turkey, uh, Meat, uh, turkey meatballs and I mm -hmm. love I never get to have sausage balls because I can't eat beef so I, I like scarfed out a few of these got into sunshade mode and got went out and play and being the person who's not in her early 20s anymore <laughs> got the worst heartburn ever <laughs> And Don't you I love how a heartburn keeps interfering with my elaborate sexual role plays? Yeah, right. That's I think that's what 30 so, sounds like. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm walling around on the floor doing my pet stuff, and this starts happening. And I can't figure out how, like, can I just get something? Like, I, I can't figure out how to non-verbally ask for a rolling. Mm. And so finally I went and I have a sock. I just bring my handler a sock and that's my signal of, can you please help me get out of puppy space? Mm -hmm. And then they'll coax me out of it. We'll, we'll start making me use my thumbs. They'll ask me open-ended questions, uh, asking questions that aren't yes or no. Once I have the actual formal. Sentences. Form like verbal cognitive yeah. thoughts around. Yeah. Where, where, where would you find your pants? You know, like they're in the locker room, you know? Um, and then as soon as I got out of it, I went, fucking heartburn. I need a rolling something <laughs> awful. And they're like, sure. oh, I'm so sorry, you know. But it's it's A, it's you're gonna encounter things you hadn't thought of, no matter how long you've been doing this. And B, you always need to have a nonverbal way of getting out of it, especially if you are those people who are gonna want to take away that safe word, because I am not gonna be one of those that's easily gonna come out of it. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people would feel uh, there, there's always that subconscious of I'm going to ruin everything if I if I start talking when I'm in pup mode or am I kit mode or whatever. So having a easy non-verbal, some people bring a certain toy, some people bring a stick, uh, or they may come over and if they tap the left late knee, that's their non that's their non-verbal safe word. For me, it's easy to find a sock, whatever sock. I just bring a sock. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, I want to make sure we're all understanding what you mean by by coming out of it, because I guess the comparison that I'm making in my mind is no matter how deep I am in meditation, if the smoke detector goes off, I'm going to get out of there and I'm going to be just fine. At the same time, at the end of like 20 minutes of quiet introspection, I appreciate like a soft, gentle gong and a slow like moving of the fingers and, you know, slowly opening the eyes before just like jumping right back into, into regular life. Is that at all what you're describing? Yeah. I, I, as someone who's also done quite a bit of meditation, I, it is very, very similar of, of it, it's a place that I don't want to let go of. Um, and I really am very comfortable there. And so there may be a, a dissonance in the brain of you need to come out of it, but you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. so the, the part of my brain that's like, Hey, no, you're in pain. <laughs> you need to stop is fighting with the part of my brain but what if we just didn't <laughs> yeah sure yeah. And, and it's worth noting that a lot of this like we want everybody to be safe and sane and consensual and, and all of these kinds of ideas but pain and degradation and humiliation i mean all of these things are not necessary but are at least very common elements in what we're discussing yeah oh yeah definitely i i yeah it's it's a simple matter of stay safe, but there, there's nothing restricting me. I could have just stood up and, and walked and gotten a roll aid, but there was there's that part of your brain that switched at that point that makes it very difficult. And for some people, it could be detrimental if they didn't have a nonverbal way to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and they wouldn't be in that position. They wouldn't be in that headspace if they didn't feel like they had a handler, a caregiver, somebody who was willing to take that burden off of them. And that's, you know, just to make it full circle. That's part of why we're here. A good part yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. And, and of course, whenever I am doing it without a handler, I never get that deep. Because sure. I don't okay. feel that safe to be able to go that deep. There's nobody looking over your shoulder to make sure it's okay to be right. that invested. 
yeah, if I'm just around around like in a puppy mosh and there's no person specifically designed to be there to watch, keep their eye on me, nah, I'm not going to get that deep. I'll, I'll I'll goof around, but I can easily just stand up and leave. <laughs> yeah, so, well, so yeah. we we haven't really talked much, I guess, about that that caretaker, handler, owner, master role. I mean, is this just a a trip sitter, somebody to like look after you and make sure that you're having a good time while you're in this experience, or is there more to it than that? For me, it's uh, it, it, again, it's akin to that caregiver for a little of they. It, it ideally is somebody who takes joy in you being a puppy. Mm. Uh, I um, when I was getting started, I had my leather sister also had a little space, and she would be the little girl and her puppy, and that was how we played together. Mm -hmm. And she, and it was a a place of she took care of her puppy. And she took just as much joy out of that as I did of being a puppy. And so even if if the same thing is as I take joy in having my own dog, so does the handler. It it is mm -hmm. a a joy and a pride. And anybody who comes over is like, oh, you have such a pretty dog, or they look the funness of throwing a toy. And sometimes it's as simple as watching a show with somebody at your side, a companion with you. Um, it could be the person who is, if, whether it, if it's a working animal, it could be that you are, uh, I've had someone who had a social anxiety and their, their, uh, their pet was a guard dog who went with them to help cope with their social anxiety. Mm -hmm. And they took on it as an emotional support animal, which I'm abs absolutely ecstatic. A friend of mine is making me an emotional support vest for Frolicon this year. So I get to mm -hmm. be an emotion since I can't do the, the, the puppy card this year, I'm going to be an emotional support animal. And as somebody with a background in psychology, that'll be great. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the handler gets out of it the, the same joy that someone would if they had an actual uh, a bio pet mm. um, and knowing that that person also gets their own joy out of it um, yeah yeah and sometimes yeah. it's very very simple <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure they're hydrated. That's all you got to do. And, yeah, you got to make sure they're <laughs> hydrated. Let them outside from time to time. Make sure they get a little bit of exercise. Oh, time yeah. in the yard. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So you you warned us about protecting our knees, about uh, you know safe words, and and what that might possibly look like here. The importance of trust with your handler and some of these other things, but. What are some of the other uh, warnings or, or safety concerns that we might not assume or might not think about in order to do this in a way that not only is safe, of course, but that that feels safe, that allows us and empowers us to get into that mindset? Uh, there are there are always people who dream of the extreme. Mm. And uh, I'm going to tell you that the body can't handle that. Uh between the psychology and the physicalness of being kept up in a, for example, a can dog kennel for long periods of time is not feasible for the human body. Mm. I, I, you're not going to be able to mentally or physically do it for much longer than a few hours at most. Uh, so I warn people of don't get yourself into a situation where you're going to strain your body, work up to uh, long terms. I've, I've probably only done, I've maybe done 36 hours in pet space and that was considered a marathon. Yeah, sure. Uh, and of course I had a plenty of opportunity to stretch out the body. I wasn't like cooped up in a cage. I, I got to have plenty of time to use the restroom, whatever the case is. And, but that was the longest I've ever gone. So those people who dream of their whole, I'm going to be a pet 24 seven forever and ever, no, that's that's not gonna get, gonna do you. And also, even if you don't do it twenty four seven, uh, be be perfectly comfortable telling people no when they try. To, if they know that you're a pet player, tell them no. Mm. If they try to come over and give you scritches, just like they wouldn't ask for consent if you if you were human, they gotta ask for consent even if you are a pet player. I may be a pet player. Pet players are humans. We're still humans, uh, but you still ask permission from a bio dog. I don't just go over. And I would like dogs. to hope so. That's not I mean, always the case, but it should be get, right. That's how you get bit, y'all. <laughs> I, I yeah. 
but also this puppy also does a lot of other things i i'm also a uh do scarification i do branding i do uh talks about psychology and sexuality and all these other things please respect me for my whole person mm -hmm. sunshine hasn't showed up today this is chris <sighs> I have to remind people this on a regular basis, oddly enough. I, I, I have to, it, it, there's a lot of learning. The other, the other last thing I have to warn, if you get into pet play, you're gonna get gifts. And you're gonna <laughs> end up with shirts that have dogs on them. Uh, uh -huh. You're gonna get chew toys for Christmas. You're gonna end up with kitty charms out the wazoo. <laughs> Just like the littles end up with 45,000 coloring books. <laughs> You're gonna get toys. <laughs> Just be prepared for that. <laughs> but on the on the more serious side of of don't just remember to put your foot down and, and and demands consent, and also don't push your body past what it can do. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, and I I like uh, uh, Dan Savage's try everything twice philosophy here yes. because don't commit yourself to like thirty six hours in a kennel. Commit to trying being in the kennel twice and maybe for the first time for an hour for, you know, some undetermined up until I can't anymore type yeah. of level. And we tried lots of things. I've tried large kennels, small kennels. Uh, one of the things I discovered was is no mirrors. I don't want mirrors. Uh, that breaks me out of mentality because what I see is not what's up in here. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of that. Um, uh, 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 it's not quite body dysmorphia, but it, it is a, a, a visualization and, and mentality of that headspace that by uh, seeing yourself breaks you out of that headspace, much like having at least having the pup hood. If you were to see you, you see a cartoon dog at the very least. But if you darted in the pup hood, I would see a human on all fours. And that's not what I see in my uh, head. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is it fair to call that dysphoric? It is very, it will knock me out of space pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will, I, my, my oh, handler at the time thought it would be really nice. Let the pretty puppy see herself. And I said, well, we learned that's not gonna work. <laughs> I, said, sure. so, I know that it came from a place of love, but that's not gonna work today. Let's not, let's not do that. <laughs> so we, we do a lot of that. And it's little things can trigger just like a dog. If you were to accidentally step on their foot, they may have may think that they've done something wrong. They're not going to be able to associate that. For me, being sent to a kennel as opposed to being placed in a kennel had two very di different connotations. I would mm. done something wrong when I was sent, whereas as being placed, it was the we're putting you someplace safe for now. And those things can really play a big impact on your play, and you have to be able to forgive you and your handler for those type of responses because you really have no control over them. Sure. Yeah. Trust is earned, but it's also a credit that you have to extend. It's built collaboratively. And that's why you start small. Very. Please start small. Be able to, to laugh at it, make goof. Uh, it's going to be ridiculous. And, and, and that's okay. That's, yeah. this stuff is, I laugh at myself all the time. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Why are you buying more pop toys? You've got 15. I'm like, but, but this one's cut. This one's shaped like an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> You, you talked about uh, PetSmart as a good option or, you know, actual pet type products. Are there are there any caveats that you might associate with that? Any uh, bad stories or experiences of not getting like the handcrafted human pet, but like actually using the bio pet toy in a way that caused the problem? Uh, well, I will give you a tip of uh, those things taste awful. Mm. So if you get a rubber toy from the dogs, from the pet store, uh, uh, rinse it and give it a good clean with a uh, mouthwash. It will give it a, a, take away that flavor. It's also a great way to disinfect it after play that isn't like just rubbing alcohol. Because mm, you don't sure. want to because anything that's going to oral, but the most of your good mouthwashes, especially those that do contain alcohol, are really good for cleaning a pet toy before the first time and after each play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anything you might think might be cool with all those nibby bits. Remember, a mouth, a human mouth isn't as strong as a dog's mouth. So if you're playing tug of war with a dog or a horse or a cat, remember that you can pull a tooth out. So be careful when you're pulling out a toy because that can happen. And I haven't heard it happen, but it it can happen. Mm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, yeah. You talked about solo play and about, uh, you know, watching these different like animal YouTube videos and and things like that. Uh, Certainly there is porn of this and that is a way to explore. Uh, But are there, um, you know, are there erotica or particular things that you might recommend to people, uh, YouTube videos or anything that kind of helps people get into the mood for solo play or to feel like they have a handler present with them? Uh, I, it, it, there, there, unfortunately there's not a lot out there. Mm. Anything that is, uh, anything that's outside of pornography is harder to find stuff. That's going to be akin to what you might want to be in to get into my mindset is, is few and far between. Uh, so I, I, not a not a big user yeah. of like erotic audio or erotic hypnosis no. or, or any of these types of strategies there's, to get into that place. There's not a lot that I know of. I'm sure it exists, but I haven't been haven't had the privilege of getting my paws on it. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, uh, but I do do what like there are a few videos out there of uh, videos of people doing the agility courses uh, mm, for mm-hmm. pup play. There are a few few puppy moshes that are out there on YouTube. Uh, so if you want to feel a little less alone, uh, those are really good ones to put on to watch other people go a woo. Uh, there are also some uh, some pretty good um i'm trying to remember her name uh out of california she does a tiktok and she does a lot of 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 affirming um uh affirmations to fellow pet players and talks about those things so there's there's a pretty strong tiktok pet player community out Mm -hmm. there so if you do a good search on tiktok you'll find some great videos of of various pet players and tedlers giving affirmations on there as well uh, that is a great resource. And since it isn't explicitly sexual, uh, a lot of those tend to not be pulled down, uh, especially mm-hmm. not right away. Even, it happens. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, we're all, as a society, trying to figure out what we can and cannot say on the internet. And I I don't love a lot of the choices that we're making, but here we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but here we are uh, trying to, to to make the best of what we have. Um, mm-hmm. And I, 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 like I always say, the best thing you can do is get involved in your local communities. And if you, if you, there isn't one, if you build it, they will come. I, I sure. really very much, if you get involved in your local uh, alternate lifestyle community and you start saying, hey, I'm into this, you might find people are there. They just were a little hesitant to come out about it. Um, say that's what happened to me and i'm i'm now on a radio sh- youtube channel talking about it sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean are there uh online groups or or oh, yeah. ways for people to get involved that might feel a little bit less intimidating i mean any anybody you want to call out uh i would say yeah if you can if you are on fet life there are a number of great groups uh we at uh, my, the one you found me on was through Pet Palace. Uh, it is exclusively for discussion. We don't do. It's not like a one of those uh, get Play hook space. up. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. not a it's not a hookup site. It's where we post things like, "Hey, I'm having problems with uh, my my owner wants me to be a dog, but I'm finding out I'm not being a dog. What should I do? What are some good resources for finding collars for people who have back problems? That's the kind of discussions we have over there." Uh, and it is is a full spectrum, and it's also where we're always posting resources, which is where you can go and find uh, that. Oh, Kira the Hound, I think is the uh, the the TikToker that just came. Kira the Hound, mm-hmm. she is an absolutely fantastic pet player out of California. She does uh, just fantastic affirmations. You get a good great look into the lifestyle of a female leather pet player. Uh, and she goes to lots of events and hosts a lot of events. So if you're out on the on that coast, that would be a great place to find uh, events is through her. Um, Kieran is oh, got, got to do an online <laughs> pet pet mosh with her once. It was like you're the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, those are just two off the top of my head. Um, I'm kind of just trying to peruse over a few things. Um, there are. A f- quite a few like primers out there uh kink academy has a few things um that's kinkacademy.com or something we can find on google yeah it, it, if you just go- google kink academy they have a great primer for pet play um 
but as far as finding good YouTube channels, unfortunately, usually they are not long lived. Um, no. So, but if you do a good search, as you can, t the problem is, is that when you start looking into pet play, you often end up with just you know, people showing you how to trade uh, your Doverman picture, how to mm -hmm. fetch, mm -hmm. yeah, how to play with a, a bio, bio pet. dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a lot of overlap with that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, any other books, podcasts, videos, uh, any other resources for somebody really wanting to dive into these sorts of things? Um, uh, there is a, a, a book called Woof with an exclamation point. <laughs> it is more specifically from the leather gay uh, perspective of pet play. So it definitely gets more into the sexuality of it than mm. I do. Um, the sexuality of it is absolutely fascinating. Uh, there's a lot more about the the animal uh, animals being in heat, uh, the primal instinct to mate, uh, that sort of thing. So you'll get a, a good dose of that, which uh, there are a lot of people who do absolutely love that type of, of play. And there is it is absolutely hot and y y go for it. Um, but that book is 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 probably one of the few good published pieces and it does come but it does come from one very specific perspective mm, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah if you could find a copy of it it is it's not a bad place to start with various aspects and things to uh keep in mind when getting into to pop play specifically yeah well I, I know we're getting close to the end of the show but it does occur to me that uh i i haven't asked you much about that history i i know you don't speak from the perspective specifically of uh gay men and mm -hmm. like leather pup culture and, and those sorts of things but can you can you talk to us at all about where this comes from or, or what some of the cultural milestones are because i know I have no doubt in my mind that for as long as there have been people who have recognized that they are different than animals, they have been pretending to be animals <laughs> and they have been pretending to be animals while having sex, while having romance, while having intimacy and relationships. So obviously this isn't new, but modern pet culture, what can you tell us about where it comes from and where it might be going? Well, uh, I would say that the modern pup play, it definitely has a lot of, of the leather culture, definitely the, the submissive gay leather definitely brought about a lot more of the mainstream of pet play from a submissive perspective, as it being one of those l levels of, and trainings that individuals go through when they're moving from submissive into more of a dominant role, that being able to to get through those levels of being a dog and that there is that strength of being a dog but also some subservience of that dog very much is a strong uh a history within our current uh pet play background mm -hmm. but like you said you, you go back and look at some romans and uh there there's there's pictures of dog play back in roman times uh, I've seen uh, there is personifications of individuals taking on animal-like qualities for religious practices, for uh, and spirituality. There is a whole bunch of of taking on animal-like qualities for both positive and negative aspects uh, throughout history, like you said. But the modern stuff is uh, it's really just just us being able to express ourselves more and more bit by bit by showing hey look it's it, you can be whatever you want and that might be a cat today and that's okay <laughs> if that's the paradigm we want to play yeah. with oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah well and finally tonight before i let you go somebody in the chat said that i needed 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 to ask you about electric shock collars and oh, now uh, i desperately I need to do that totally forgot about those um, there is a, quite a bit of a conversation about those. Uh, some people say, no, don't use those. And some people <laughs> say, no, they're perfectly yeah. safe. I use them all the time. Uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, as someone who has engaged in electro play before, uh, the, the ones that are out there typically are not going to be comfortable for you because of the level of of fat and muscle around the neck and the lack of fur is going to lead to a pro possibility of of damage or harming you now some people put them around other parts of the body instead mm -hmm. and they find that that works okay but at that point it's no longer a collar yeah so, so like, this is one of those maybe avoid pet smart yeah. and look at like your your violet wand like if you want to have your electroshock play maybe get it from yeah. and 
the appropriate venue. I would not get those from a pet vendor. I would go to your to your violet one. Yeah, exactly what you just said. Definitely. Uh, don't don't play around with that stuff. Um, it's it, it's just not human tested very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, beautiful. I, yeah. I, well, I want to let people know about the results of our poll tonight. We had only 25% of people saying that they have ever felt like truly lost in a role play. I, uh, I guess I'm curious how that number strikes you. And uh, yeah, if, if, have you ever felt lost in a role play is even really the right question when we're trying to describe this this headspace, this mindset, this mesmerized, dissociated, whatever it is that we are trying to distinguish within our own consciousness. Does it surprise you that not a lot of people maybe recognize that in themselves? I, I absolutely was shocked uh, that there's only 25% of people responded. I like, I was like, Oh no, it's hundred percent. If you've role played, you felt like, Oh, well, this is silly. Or oh, I'm not sure what to do with this. Or is mm. am I saying the right thing? Or, or is this dirty talk it's going where it's supposed to go? Or, or am I, am I, they, are, should I really be buying into this, this whole Catholic school girl? Is this a little too sacrilegious for me? I mean, everybody usually gets into it at some point and get questions. And if you're, if you're not questioning, I'm like, did, did, did you really get into it? Yeah, sure. Well, for me, I suppose it just comes down to, yeah, we are talking about a particular phenomena that you can experience and try and uh, occasion in all of these different ways. But that phenomena is not categorically distinct from the phenomena of pretending to be a uh, like polite person when you're frustrated that your barista is taking too long, right? Like getting lost in that role play is not anything that we could measure with an MRI any differently than just really enjoying uh, what you're experiencing. I mean, is all that true? Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's, everybody has their own little bit of, of second guessing themselves and, mm whether that's you code switching from one lifestyle to the next, or whether that's deep into the throes of a teacher student type role play. You, yeah. It's okay. You just have to forgive yourself. It's, it's okay to be wrong. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it, everything won't be for everyone, but anyone listening to the sound of my voice can get on their knees and pull a wheelchair, can bat around a ball of string, can experience what we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yes. It makes me so happy. Seeing other people <laughs> act compersion really hard all the time, watching other people do pet play, too. So mm -hmm. just the thought of other people going out and trying it for the first time makes my little heart so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, before I start to take us out tonight, I guess uh, I just wanted to ask if there is anything that you would say not to the people who are part of the community or the people who are curious about joining the community, but to the folks who have no idea what the hell we're talking about, what would you like for people who aren't interested in all of this to know and understand about you and your community and your sexuality? Oh, about me? Oh, wow. Uh if you don't know anything about me, well, I I am a I, I'm a girl, as my name says, <laughs> uh, but I am uh, heavily engaged in a alternate lifestyle community here in Birmingham, Alabama. I have a background in psychology, and I bring all of my my powers that be to our home turf that is the red chair, and there is a safe place for us to explore on an educational level. Uh, all sorts of things that are kinky, BDSM, sexuality, pansexuality, leather, etc. And that is a good place that if you don't know anything, especially if you're in this area, uh, to to kind of dip your toe in and tr give it a try. And there's there, it, it's always best to try things with people who know what's going on and learn from people who've made mistakes and uh, like, you know, getting heartburn when they're rolling around on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, uh, uh, that's who I am. I'm here just trying to help other people discover things that bring them joy. <laughs> yeah. Are are there assumptions that that quote normies might make about you and about your lifestyle or uh, anything that you want to ask for from I guess our culture, our community at large? Especially knowing how sex negative and, and confused we all are like, like we've gotten all through this conversation without talking about 
Tucker Carlson and about uh, litter boxes in schools and all of the bullshit misinformation that exists about your community. Uh, anything you might ask for from the rest of us? That not we're not broken people. Mm. I had an absolutely fantastic childhood. I am absolutely in joy and in love with life. That there is absolutely nothing bad about my, what I'm doing. I harm no one. I and I do nothing but try to make other people happy. There is just in general wag more bark less motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what it comes down to <laughs> sorry jesus wag more bark, bark less, less yes. got it <laughs> <laughs> well i think that's a, a fantastic place for us to leave it tonight and uh i do want to remind people that the show is always on that uh all of the shows of the atheist community of austin are widely available on YouTube, but that you can also keep up with what's going on with our community on our website uh, by visiting uh, atheist-community.org. You can email this show directly with sex at atheist-community.org or email the ACA itself with TV at. Uh, I, of course, want to remind people that at the end of this month, Live on February 26th, Talk Heathen is going to be hosted in the studio by Objectively Dan with Secular Sexuality's own Kara Griffin, uh, who will also be, and then uh, the Atheist Experience, I'm sorry, will be Objectively Dan again with Johnny P. Angel. Uh, speaking of events that are going on here in the local Austin area, I want to ask that if anybody lives in Austin or Austin, ad Austin adjacent, that we are in a great need of additional crew members for all of these shows. So if you are interested in helping with video, with audio, with call screening, or if you're able to attend a live show, please send us that email at tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, beyond that, you can check out this show as well as all of our others in a one-stop shop audio only format at tiny.cc slash AEN podcasts. You can find all kinds of great resources and conversation in the Secular Sexuality Facebook fan group, which you can find at tiny.cc slash FBSSG, as well as the Atheist Community of Discord, which is available at tiny.cc slash ACD Discord. Take a look at tiny.cc slash merch ACA, where you can find all of the different merch for this show, as well as many others, including a limited edition special this month only sex swing pink t-shirt that I absolutely fucking love. Uh, and finally, I want to take a quick moment and thank our incredible crew who was working on so many different pieces and struggling to get all of this together today. Thank you so much for everything you do to make us look good and to allow us to have these sexy, silly, ridiculous conversations. Uh, and finally, Chris, I, I guess I just want to ask if there are any sort of final thoughts or, or last impressions you want to leave with the audience tonight. I think we've... Uh pretty much covered it with the uh bark, bark less swag more yeah <laughs> I, no it's like I, I can't i can't do better than that at this point that'll cover it that'll <laughs> cover it so i guess i want to encourage everybody to go out there and bark and yes i apologize to check out chris the girl find out more about her and her work at theredchair.com and now i suppose you can Grab your knee pads, maybe a ball of string, maybe some ears, uh, all of these different toys, a pup hood, a butt plug, whatever it is that prepares you to get into that very special mind state that allows you to woof instead of bark and to hopefully give yourself a big old orgasm or better yet, give somebody else one.
Watch Talk Heathen live Sundays at 1 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTH and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TH.